Welcome back, fellow and future engineers. This is Jacob Hess, your instructor and mentor. And welcome to the ARP lesson, where we get to discuss a nifty little protocol that helps us to discover what the MAC address is of different computers on the network. So just like this diagram kind of entails, we can think of it like this. Hey, bro, what's your MAC? Well, that does give you an idea of what it's all about, but it's not exactly how it works. And we'll get into all those details, of course, in this lesson. And you might also find out what pizza has to do with an ARP request. So let's go ahead and have a look at our agenda. We'll start out by discussing what ARP exactly is, and of course, what the acronym means. Well, I'll give that to you. It's Address Resolution Protocol. Then we'll move on to the ARP cache, the infamous ARP cache, or ARP table, as we call it. And then we'll discuss Gratuitous ARP, which is a nice little addition to the ARP protocol. And then we'll discuss RARP, or Reverse Address Resolution Protocol, and why it's not actually good to talk about this one anymore. And then we'll have a look at a really great diagram that shows us exactly what happens in an ARP request. All right, let's rock and roll. So what is ARP, guys? Well, ARP is Address Resolution Protocol, and it's defined by the Internet Engineering Task Force Request for Comments number 826. And here is the link. I'm not going to pull it up this time, but you can go ahead and browse through that RFC if you so wish. But that is where you can find, of course, all the information on ARP. Now, it's used to resolve IP addresses into MAC addresses, meaning the IP address is already known, but the MAC is not. And the reason why we need ARP is because computers need to know both the IP address and the MAC address of a destination before they can start talking to the destination, before they can start network communication. They need both of these things, the IP and the MAC. I know I've said that before, but we're going to find out now how we can actually make sure that we always have both of those things. It's through the use of ARP. So ARP is used, of course, to find out a MAC address when the IP address of the destination is known and it works something kind of like this hey bro what's your Mac again not exactly like that but this is a general good idea to get in your head ARP is whenever you need to know somebody's Mac and that's generally the way it works now it is kind of correct this statement because whenever we're saying hey bro that signifies we're talking directly to someone else right and we kind of are because we're including the IP address of whose Mac we need However, it's not exactly correct because we're sending out a broadcast frame whenever we send out the ARP message, as you will see. And before we move on to the next subject, uh, we'll, let's go ahead and look at the actual ARP packet. So the ARP packet, this is inside an Ethernet frame, right? So inside the Ethernet frame, you can tell we're inside an Ethernet frame because we have an Ethernet header here, right? Ethernet header, source address, destination address, and we have that infamous CRC check at the end of it. So in the inside, the goodies inside this particular Ethernet frame is the ARP request or the ARP reply. And this is what it looks like. Now that you guys are familiar with packets inside of frames and things like that, we can actually kind of understand that the frame is going to contain some cool information. And this is, in this case, we have ARP inside of our frames. And the point of this particular diagram is to show you that included in an ARP request or an ARP reply are going to be these items, the source hardware address, source protocol address, target hardware address, and target protocol address. So hardware meaning the MAC address, and protocol, in our case, meaning the IP address, right? So th these are the things included in an ARP request or an ARP reply, and that is what an ARP packet looks like inside the frame. So that's good for you guys to know and understand because now you can kind of relate this to any type of future protocols that we discuss. You can think, oh, those go inside of an Ethernet frame, just like we discussed before. We have this packet, IP information inside there is going to be other stuff, other protocol information, and then that goes into the Ethernet frame. All right, sound good? So what exactly is this ARP cache thing we've been talking about? Well, the ARP cache is a temporary table. That's why it's called a cache. It can have items be removed from it over time. But it's a temporary kind of table of all known IP address to MAC address mappings. So anytime that we do an ARP request and we get a response with a MAC address, we put that, or the computer puts that rather, in the ARP cache or the ARP table. So in a Windows or a Mac or a Linux, all three of these, it's the same actual command to view the ARP table. It's ARP space dash A, ARP dash A, right? On a Cisco router or switch, it's just show ARP 
from the privilege exec mode. Or if you're in global config, you can type do show ARP. We'll get into that configuration of Cisco routers and switches much more later, of course. But if you want to go ahead and try these out, hey, you can do that by using these commands. And you can go ahead and pull up your command prompt on your Windows machine and type ARP A, and you'll see that your computer has an ARP cache. It has an ARP table with listings of all the IP addresses and all the related MAC addresses that it knows about. So that's your ARP cache. Now, the ARP cache also includes both static and dynamically learned entries. So if you do a ARP A command on your via your command prompt on your Windows machine, you're going to see something that says static on the right side and also dynamic on the right side. Now static is going to be for things like the broadcast. So your specific network has a broadcast IP address and that's going to relate directly to the broadcast frame. And 255.255.255.255 is the all-inclusive broadcast IP address and that relates directly to the frame FFFFFF FFFFFF. So that's a static translation. It's always going to be in there. It's never going to change because that's always the way it is. So that's what a static entry is. A static entries are put into the ARP cache by the computer itself statically. Now dynamically ones are basically learned entries. So if there's anything that says dynamic, it's because the, the device actually reached out via an ARP request and pulled the MAC address or got a response with the MAC address and put that in the table because of a response it got or it was updated some other way by the network about the IP address and MAC address and it learned it dynamically, right? So this is a good way to start thinking about static things versus dynamic things because static and dynamic are two types of words that are used often in networking, not just with ARP stuff. You'll hear them again. All right, so here is the output of an ARP-A. And you can see here we have the dynamic and the static entries, just as I was saying. And at the bottom here, we have the 255.255.255.255 IP broadcast. And the MAC relationship to that is all Fs, because a MAC broadcast is all Fs. So this is a static broadcast entry. And then we have some dynamic entries, right? So the computer here has learned that 192.168.1.1 has this MAC address here, c 83 c 6 e 8 and it was learned dynamically. And that's really the gist of it, guys. That's really the gist of the ARP-A command. There are other ARP commands that are available, but this is really the only one we need to know and understand right now. But if you feel like you need to learn more, of course you have that brain that knows everything called the Internet, where you can look up anything you want. So feel free. All right. Next, we need to go ahead and say that before sending network communication, computers will first reference their ARP cache. So that's actually the first thing they do is they check to see if they already have the MAC address. Then if they don't, they will send an ARP request to determine the MAC, right? All right. And after the ARP is completed, then of course, they update the ARP cache. That's how the process works with the ARP cache, right? ARP request, ARP cache, that's how these things are related. And we'll see this entire process in a nice, easy to follow interactive diagram at the end of the presentation. So that's the ARP cache. All right, next important topic is gratuitous ARP. Gratuitous ARP is an ARP announcement actually, and it's used whenever hosts come onto the network for the first time, and if their operating system is configured with gratuitous ARP turned on, it will go ahead and send an ARP update out onto the network saying, hey guys, here is my MAC address and my IP. And it does this without the need of an ARP request. So that's what's special about gratuitous ARP. Now some networks may not like gratuitous ARP to happen and they can block these types of things. But in general, it's a good thing to have. However, there are some kind of security risks involved with gratuitous ARP sometimes. So just as I said, it's sometimes performed during the computer startup process. So whenever your computer operating system boots up, it might send out a gratuitous ARP. Now it would do this to make sure the network is updated if it recently changed its IP address. So if you go into your computer and you change the IP address to a different static address, and then you reboot the machine, it might come online and send out a gratuitous ARP, right? And here's how it works. Basically, it's, hey guys, here's my Mac and my IP. So it comes online and just sends out a gratuitous ARP message to update everybody on the network with its Mac and IP information. So that is gratuitous ARP. All righty. Now that you have that, you have all the important things under your belt, you can understand what RARP is and also, well, what RARP is not. So here is what RARP is. RARP is the Reverse Address Resolution Protocol, and you can read all about it in RFC 903 via that link there. 
and it used to be used, keyword, used to be used to resolve MAC addresses into IP addresses. And the thing is, it required servers on every single network in order to do this. And they started trying to use RARP for many different types of things, but ended up that something else came along and replaced it. It was called Boot P. So that Boot P actually replaced it, and then Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol came along, and Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol still uses Boot P and provides the same services as RARP, but much better, meaning that it doesn't have to have a server on every single network, but it also provides dynamic host configuration services, meaning it hands out IP addresses. That's what DHCP is for. We'll talk about DHCP a lot in the future, so we're not going to get into it more than that. We can just know that DHCP and BootP replaced RARP, and RARP is no longer used. And so here's that last note, that DHCP is used primarily to automatically assign IP addresses to hosts on a network, right? And again, we'll get into that a lot more in the future. So if RARP is no longer used, then why in the heck is Jacob telling you about this? Well, why in the heck am I talking in third person? I don't know. Well, no, actually I do know why I am telling you about RARP, and that's because you're going to see it in lots of different text and documentation out there. It's still all over the place. It's all over the web. It might be in some other texts. People just haven't really removed it. It even makes it into some newer text sometimes saying that RARP is the reverse of ARP and it's in there and it's valid. Well, it's not valid, it's not used anymore, so you can delete it from your brains. But don't delete the part about not needing to know it. <laughs> All right, so moving on, guys. Here is our awesome ARP diagram. In this diagram, we'll get to see what happens whenever an ARP request gets sent out onto the network. So, we have the host here on the left. He wants to send data to 10.10.10 dot 55 which is this host here on the right right and the host on the right we know his mac address is all b's but this computer here on the left 10 10 10 105 he does not know the mac address of this host otherwise he wouldn't be trying to send an arp so this host on the left is also you can see his mac there all right so he wants to send data to 10 10 10 55 i want to send data to 10 10 10 55 okay but I need to know the MAC address, right? Because we need both the IP and the MAC. First, let me check my ARP cache to see if I have an entry in there. Hmm, nope, no MAC address in there. Guess I'll have to go ahead and send out a broadcast ARP message. So, what does the host do? He creates a frame, right? And in that frame, he has the ARP request inside the, the payload of that frame. And this ARP request is sent to F -f 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 I think that was the right amount of Fs, on the frame header, right? The MAC address, this is a broadcast MAC. But it also puts the source of where it's coming from, right? From all A's, because that's the MAC address of this host. And in the payload, it's saying, who is 10.10.10.55? Not exactly like that, but using the, uh, the, the ARP information that we looked at in one of our first slides, using that format, with the source and the target, it's asking who is 10.10.10.55. So it creates this frame, right? And then what does it do? Sends it out into the network and it makes it to the switch. And then the switch says, oh, let me check that frame out. It's got a destination MAC address of all Fs. I guess I need to go ahead and forward that out then. I guess I need to go ahead and copy that frame and send it down to both of these hosts that are connected to me. So he does, he sends it out, it's a broadcast frame, and then what happens? These guys look at it, and this guy in the bottom here with all C's and the 10, 10, 10, 200 IP address says, oh, well that's not me, right? I'm not 10, 10, 10, 55. I'm going to discard this frame. And the host on the right, who is 10, 10, 10, 55, says, that's me. I'm going to go ahead and reply to this ARP request. So then, that's exactly what happens. Host 10.10.55, creates a new frame with the ARP reply and it is sent directly to, as a unicast frame, to all A's MAC address, which is our host on the left. And of course, he includes the source of all B's and saying, hey, I am 10, 10, 10, 55, and sends that right over to the host that requested it. And then what happens? Well, the host says, all right, I received that ARP reply now I need to update my ARP cache. So it'll go ahead and take the new IP address, or it'll go ahead and take the new MAC address, which is all B's, and put it in its ARP cache. So it knows that 10, 10, 10, 55 is BB, 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 BB. 
So that's how it works, guys. And after that whole process works, the host on the left is like, whoa, finally, now I can do that thing that I've been wanting to do. I can ask 10, 10, 10, 55 to order some pizza. All right, I'm getting starving over here. I need to order some pizza. And well, I'm gonna ask 10, 10, 10, 55 to do it because I don't have any money. All right, so that's what pizza has to do with ARP, guys. And that was kind of my little kicker joke there. But that is a diagram that describes ARP to a T. So here is our recap. Address resolution protocol is a very useful protocol for building the ARP table. Why? Because that's exactly what it was made for, to build out the ARP table. And looking at ARP tables, again, on host and any networking equipment like a router or switch is good for troubleshooting because you can check to see if the host, router, or switch knows the IP to MAC relationship. And if it doesn't, then you can understand that maybe that's why communication isn't happening. For some reason, that host or router or switch is not able to build its ARP cache properly, and it's alluding to another problem on the network. So it can help you kind of identify what's working and what's not. ARP tables are good things to look at. And gratuitous ARP, it's helpful for updating the network automatically. Remember, if you change the IP address on your computer and then reboot it, you might send out a gratuitous ARP if it's, if it's allowed on your operating system. And then lastly, but not least, RARP no longer exists, so please disregard it in any texts that you read. So that is the address resolution protocol lesson, and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I enjoyed putting it together, and I hope you enjoyed my joke about the pizza. Although, yes, I, I do think I am hungry now. And this is Jacob Hess, your instructor and mentor, signing out. See you in the next video. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.